Welcome to this Onc Live News Network webinar. Today's discussion will be focused on new treatment options for rare diseases in soft tissue sarcoma. I'm your host, Dr. Jonathan Trent, Professor of Medicine, Associate Director of Clinical Research, and Director of the Sarcoma Program at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine in Miami, Florida. Today, I am joined by my colleague, Dr. Nita Somaya, Associate Professor and Director of Sarcoma Clinical Research in the Department of Sarcoma Medical Oncology at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. During the next 45 minutes, we are going to navigate through some of the questions surrounding how we treat patients with gastrointestinal stromal tumors and other soft tissue sarcomas. We'll consider how we are currently using available agents, how they can be sequenced throughout the disease continuum, and how the latest data will help us in making these decisions in our clinics. Okay, Nita, I'd like to really start maybe discussing about the workup of soft tissue sarcoma. It's really the foundation upon which our treatment arises. We can't really know how to treat a patient unless we know what type of sarcoma there is. And the recent World Health Organization report showed that there are now 175 different sarcomas. So, so tell me in your practice, how do you, how do you start your work up? Oh, so we definitely, that's where the expert sarcoma pathologist comes in. I think every sarcoma patient's pathology should be read by an expert pathologist because more and more with these different subtypes that are coming out, the treatment, though previously they were all treated the same, the treatment actually differs quite a bit between the subtypes. So it's very important for the pathologist to first make a histopathologic diagnosis and then run molecular testing when required, mm -hmm. both immunohistochemistry, FISH, RT-PCR, what's required to further subclassify the subtype because that is critical in our decision and treatment, you know, management of the patient going forward. So I think uh, in our practice when patients come in, uh, the pathology is requested if it wasn't done at MD Anderson and the pathologists at MD Anderson review the pathology so that we can confirm the diagnosis. Because in quite a few cases actually, they do change the diagnosis, you know, sometimes completely when it wasn't mm -hmm. a sarcoma and call it a sarcoma, but also subtype classification changes quite a bit. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I can think of several examples in my practice where a patient was diagnosed, for instance, with a GI stromal tumor, and then we reviewed the pathology and found, in fact, they had a dedifferentiated liposarcoma. Correct. Or, or other types of, of differences. Totally different treatment. Right? Yeah, it's critical. Yeah. Yes. So let me just ask a little more about how you fit molecular testing in your practice when you start thinking about not just diagnostic, but therapy. Are there specific soft tissue sarcoma subtypes that yes. you really need testing to be done before you start treatment? Right, so there are quite a few. So of course, uh, the one, you know, the most common gist, of mm -hmm. course, is a soft tissue sarcoma. For that subtype, you know, our, some of our pathologists will reflexly send for a targeted kit and PDGFR sequencing for the most common uh, mutations. And that does help in treatment decision making because before I, if I am going to start a patient on treatment, then I need to know their molecular mutation subtype yeah. for GIST. So GIST is one of those subtypes that we do order or make sure that we send off, send off the mutations. Uh, there are also other subtypes where if I'm suspecting um, a certain mutation that might help me in uh, treatment, like if there is, uh, say a uh, uterine unclassified sarcoma now. I know it's rare, but enteric fusions are more mm. common in that subtype. So for those patients, we will send off either the baseline enteric by immunohistochemistry as a screening, or we might do the whole panel to look for these trans, you know, translocations. Uh, there are other subtypes too, but that, you know, for translocation testing, you know, to uh, say, uh, detect a synovial sarcoma, or a mixed round cell liposarcoma, but that usually is done by the pathologists already. So yeah. we're lucky that way we're in a center where they will do that for us, but there's quite a few times that we will specifically request for additional testing if it's not done. And you know, for MDM2, like for DDF liposarcoma, they usually do fish for MDM2 amplification, mm -hmm. but if it's not yeah. done, 
then we send it off, especially if you're thinking of certain, you know, newer drugs that we want to yeah. treat in, on clinical trials. And CDK4. Exactly, and CDK4 amplification, because we yeah. can use those drugs. So, yes, yeah, so there's quite a few subtypes where we will reflexly then order it after if you're looking for additional treatments after they've gone through their frontline therapies. Yeah, I think, I, I agree with you. I think it's a very exciting time, and I think in many ways, sarcoma is really leading the field in the importance of molecular testing. And for instance, your point about GIST, you know, it used to be GIST was one disease. Now it's kit mutant GIST, PDGFR mutant GIST, RAF mutant GIST, SDH deficient GIST. There's so many different subtypes. And it was surprising to me, the recent publication by Florendez et al, that only 30% of metastatic GIST patients yes are getting mutation testing on their tumors in the United States. I think it's, it's clearly an opportunity for us to provide education on the necessity of mutation testing in just patients for optimal patient mm -hmm. management. That, that was actually surprising. I, I knew it was low, but I didn't know it was that low. Yeah. Um, and these, and it wasn't, and majority of those patients actually did receive treatment, so they went on to start therapy, but only, 20-some, close to 30% of them actually had mutation testing done. But I think what's good, and we'll discuss in, you know, uh, further, is that with the newer drugs available, hopefully it'll become more and more evident why mutation yeah. testing is critical up front. Yeah.